Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today we will discuss about COVID-19, especially laboratory diagnosis of COVID-19 and its treatment. So we know about the signs and symptoms of this disease like um, fever for as I have seen that the fever lasts for around 10 to 14 days with loss of taste, loss of smell sometimes and perverted taste. Uh, no test, patient complaints like this and tremendous weakness with dehydration, signs of dehydration and temperature fluctuates, not necessary um, in a one day time multiple spikes of the temperature you get it and at the same time breathlessness in some patient may occur and may not occur but dry cough usually that the patient suffers. These are the symptoms. I will not elaborate upon the symptoms, but what I go, I'm going to tell you about um, SpO2. SpO2 in a patient, we should divide this COVID patient into mild, moderate and severe. If the patient SpO2 is more than 94, then it is considered as mild. If it is between 94 and 90, then it is considered as moderate. And if it is less than 90, percent then it is considered as severe second is respiratory rate and the respiratory rate is if the respiratory rate is less than 24 then it is mild if it is between 24 to 20 to 30 then it is moderate and if it is more than 30 respiratory rate per minute then it is called as severe if we take an x-ray what x-ray finding we will get in mild cases we will get nothing on x-ray but in moderate cases you will get some infiltrates that is pneumonia you can say pneumonia we will get bilateral pneumonia and uh, with lesser symptoms and signs with less breathlessness as compared to the severe and in severe pneumonia will be plus plus okay CT scan lungs there will be a ground glass appearance and this ground glass appearance on CT scan if it is less than 25 percent it is mild if it is between 25 to 75 percent it is moderate and if it is more than 75 percent ground glass appearance on CT scan then it is called as severe ground glass appearance of chest especially lungs Another test we can do clinically uh, on a routine basis is ask the patient to do exercise or walk for 3 minutes and then check his oxygen saturation. If the oxygen saturation goes down which you have taken before walking by 4% then it gives a highly suspicion of COVID-19 and one more test still we can do is most of the patient those who suffer from this COVID-19 are tachycardia suffer from tachycardia that is pulse rate more than 100 and also by this and also by this doing exercise test for three minutes we can understand that the pulse rate goes very fast that is more than 10 beats per minute for the exercise for the metabolic rate so these are two tests and another test that is routinely done is RT-PCR test that is a swab is taken that is reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction test where the swab is taken from the nasopharynx or from the throat and it is an antigen test this if it is antigens are present then test becomes positive or it is negative there in that there may be some false positive and false negative cases also can occur depending upon from where the swab is taken and who takes the swab and uh, another test still we can do is antibody test those who suffered from covid 19 to rule out whether the patient had suffered in the past with the COVID-19 antibody detection will suggest that will not suggest that he is now suffering from COVID 
but he was suffering from covid there are n number of there are multiple laboratory investigation that are that in hospital they used to do but what the general practitioner should know i will focus on that only we should get c reactive protein of all patient who are suffering from uh, fever now if the c reactive protein normal c reactive protein is less than 10 less than 10 mg per liter but if the c reactive protein is more than 10 mg per liter that is up to but less than 40 mg per liter then it is mild if it is between 40 to 125 then it is called moderate and if it is between and if it is more than 125 then it is called as severe if the patient is suffering from fever then we should suspect if the crp is raised by 6 times 7 times or 10 times normal then you should suspect highly that he may be a sufferer of corona second thing is you have to see is neutrophil lymphocyte ratio most of the patient they suffer from lymphopenia lymphocyte count goes low even though it is a viral condition but the lymphocyte count goes low so neutrophil normally it is 75% 70 to 75% and lymphocyte it is 25 to 30% so neutrophil lymphocyte ratio means what it is normally it is 3 ratio between neutrophil and lymphocyte is 3 so if it is less than 3.2 if it is less than 3.2 then it is called as mild and if it is more than 3.2 then it is moderate and if it is more than 5.5 then it is called as severe i'll give an example if the neutrophil count is 80 80% and if the lymphocyte count becomes 8% then it is difference of 10% that is goes to more than 10 so if the lymphocyte count is more than 5.5 then it is called as severe so this occurs in severe cases lft liver function test liver function test nothing happens in mild cases but in moderate cases there is some derangement of the liver function but in severe cases there is moderate derangement of the liver cases there are other also investigation that are done that is d dimer test and lactate dehydrogenase test ferritin test so these we generally you in general practice we do not do it and so we will not focus on that now we got now we got the idea that what we have to get is crp done if it is more that is 6 to 7 times more or if there is a bilateral pneumonia or if the oxygen saturation is less than 90 and uh, if the respiratory rate is more than 30 then we should consider or we should suspect that and if there is high rise of temperature more than 98.6 degree fahrenheit then we should consider or suspect then we must consider that he might be the sufferer of covid 19 now we'll go to treatment actually what is advised to us by government that we should refer all these fever cases to the government hospital and uh, take a swab so now but we must know as a general practitioner we must know what is the treatment and what they do when they go to the bigger hospital so that i have decided to explore this this treatment so first is a general category general treatment what we give is paracetamol 500 mg tid second what we give is antitussive third what we give is vitamin c 500 mg bd or tid and zinc tablet 50 mg bd this zinc then uh, we maintain hydration this we have to do in mild moderate as well as in severe cases but it is advised extra omes tablet is also given in mild cases as well as moderate cases and in severe cases omes or pantoprazole it is given iv and the antibiotic these are the general measures and antibiotics that is azithromycin is given azithromycin 500 mg od in mild cases for 5 days or if not 
If the patient is sensitive to azithromycin, then we should give clavum or amoxiclav 625 mg BD or TID, depend upon the weight of the patient for five days in mild cases and in severe in moderate cases again all treatment which is given in uh, which were given in mild should be given in moderate cases except that here if there is a chances of a secondary bacterial infection if you see if there is a development of a pneumonia then you should give iv injection ceftrike zone 1 gram bid for five days and if the patient is suffering from cough then you should give antitussive in both mild as well as moderate in severe cases severe cases i mean to say when the patient's oxygen is less than 90 and when the respiratory rate goes more than 30 and when crp is more than 125 at that time we must think to give all these measures which were given in the mild and moderate except that here we should give it IV, IV pentaprazole and IV injections antibiotic if there is a chance of a secondary infection then IV antibiotic they prefer is injection peptides 4.5 gram 3 times a day or they say meropenem injection 500 mg 3 times a day for five days role of steroids in mild cases steroid is not required but here you can see my slide about this treatment which is given here now steroids role of steroids there is no role of steroid in mild cases but in moderate cases it is advisable that injection dexamethasone 0.1 to 0.2 mg per kg per day OD dose you should give that is comes to around 6 to 8 mg means 2 ml OD should be given to the patient or injection methyl prednisolone 0.5 to 1 milligram per day should be given and for 5 days. Then in severe cases the dose should be double that is injection dexamethasone which was here 0.1 to 0.2 mg now in the severe cases it is 0.2 to 0.4 mg per kg per day and uh, that comes to around 6 to 8 mg IV BID IV BID for 10 days or injection methyl prednisolone here also the dose is double 1 to 2 mg per kg per day that maximum up to 80 mg per 80 mg per day for 10 days here the slide is given and you can see this slide oxygen support this is most important in covid 19 treatment oxygen support where in mild cases oxygen is not required but in moderate cases 4 to 10 liters of the oxygen by nasal cannula or my mask is given and with a prone position of the patient for 30 to 120 minutes the prone position is because most of the alveoli are lying in the back and when the patient lie on the prone position then this alveoli get free of any fluid if it is collected there and these alveoli get easy space there is no resistance to the flow of air so prone position is maintained now in severe cases if you see 10 to 60 liters of the oxygen per minute is 10 to 60 liters of the oxygen per minute is given by hfnc that is high flow nasal cannula it is given and it is especially given in the hospital so we cannot do anything prone ventilation for 16 to 18 hours daily is required Now, most of the patient I have seen that and most of the doctors I have seen that whenever they diagnose any patient suffering from sign and symptoms of the disease, they advise to take hydroxychloroquine. The hydroxychloroquine sulfate is, has a particular indication that I will tell you. It is not generally used. 
it is not generally prescribed it is prescribed in a patient who is suffering from diabetes mellitus who is suffering from hypertension who is suffering from uh, cva or ckd or cld cva is cerebrovascular accident or uh, ckd is chronic uh, kidney disease or chronic liver disease so or if age the if age is more than 60 years and it is contraindicated if the patient is suffering from cardiac diseases where the qtc is more than 48 and the dose is given on the first day the dose is 400 mg bid and followed by 400 mg od for 5 days this is the dose of hydroxychloroquine and you can see this slide which is given here now next in the therapy that is added is anticoagulant anoxaparin that is 40 mg subcutaneous od for 5 days it is given in moderate cases or in and in severe cases anoxaparin 40 mg subcutaneous bid for 10 days and in moderate cases it is given for 5 days but od but it is you must remember the contraindication of this we use this in day to day practice in unstable and then we used to use in cva and uh, also we use in uh, pulmonary thrombosis or also we use in uh, thrombosis of the leg veins contraindications are important and stage renal disease esrd active bleeding pregnancy when and when the platelet count is less than 20000 and next this is what we required a treatment in day to day practice one term that is used is cytokine storm this cytokine storm means what sometimes what happens in a patient who is suffering from covid multiple immune immune system is hy- becomes hyperactive and the cytokines are released abundantly this is called a cytokine storm and this in cytokine storms in moderate cases it is used injection toculiz tocuzumab injection tocuzumab is used in cytokine storm 400 mg maximum 800 mg slow iv in 100 ml saline over the period of 1 hour and if needed you can repeat after 12 hours discharge criteria this is again important point in covid 19 if the patient is of febrile for 3 days in mild as well as moderate uh, sorry in moderate as well as severe cases the discharge criteria is same that is if the patient is of febrile for more than 3 days without any antipyretic then he should be discharged plus no breathlessness and or 10 days from the onset of the suffering these this is the criteria and in severe cases if the patient doesn't require oxygen no oxygen without oxygen he can walk around for 3 days consecutive 3 days then he can be discharged so this was about in short the covid diagnosis and the treatment part what i know about covid i wanted it to explore to my colleagues and my friends and uh, all the general practitioners who know me and who don't know me um, i wanted to share this knowledge and we must keep ourselves updated so that we can give a better treatment to the patient thank you very much